Valley Sports, presented by Southeast Michigan Ford. Hi, everybody, with my friend and my partner, Devin Gardner. I'm Matt Shepard. This is where the big boys hunt. What excites you most about this matchup? Just that. It's the big boys, Division I football, and we're going to see a bunch of college Division I future players on the field. Including quarterbacks. Bryce Underwood, just a junior at Belleville, already two rings to his credit. He seems to get better year after year. And then, of course, Isaiah Marshall already committed to Kansas. Yeah, let's start with Bryce Underwood. Shep, I'm just going to tell you, I don't know where this actual address is, but... He has at least a timeshare here at Ford Field. He's been here 10 and under, 12 and under, freshman year, sophomore year, and here he is again as a junior trying to three-peat. He's a dynamic player in the run and the pass game. I cannot wait to see him live. If there's a quarterback in the state that is his equal athletically, it's the guy on the other side of the field, Isaiah Marshall. I'm just telling you, man, he's been building for this moment since he was a little kid. He's just now getting his opportunity at Fort Field. When I talked to him earlier this year, he said, I promise you I'll be there. Well, he made good on that promise. Now he has an opportunity to get Southfield their first state champion. Nothing against my partner here, who is one of the best quarterbacks in Michigan high school history, but we made sometimes too much of the quarterback position. Not tonight, we don't. Bryce Underwood, Isaiah Marshall, two teams ready for a championship. Could it be Southfield A&T's first, or does Belleville make a little Michigan history? We soon find out, because the kickoff to Division I is coming up on Valley Sports. Every single time the ball is snapped, the guy across from you, you got a decision to make. You have a decision to make every time the ball is snapped. Let's make that decision. We make that decision, it's a great day. Let's make that decision. Tell yourself right now, I'm never gonna lose a rep off of effort. We're gonna make mistakes, no so what. Handle adversity. The verses, like I always tell y'all, means nothing else. All year, you showed up and you showed out. I love y'all. Let's go have fun on this business trip. We all we got. We all we need. We all we got. We all we need. Time to get a break. Set. Hit. Let's go. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Oh, prayer, 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 prayer. Touch the mic. Touch the mic. Everybody touch the mic. that message from Aaron Marshall the belief that he has in his team and wanting them to have fun on the biggest stage while going out and getting that school's first ever state championship win with Devin Gardner I'm Matt Shepard down to Natalie Kerwin the third member of our broadcast team good night Hey, Shep, well, as you guys talked about, it is the battle of the quarterbacks tonight. And for Bryce Underwood, for a lot of people, he burst onto the scene his freshman year, his very first state title game here at Ford Field. Well, I asked him, I said, is that when you felt like you arrived? He said, no, I was here long before that in my mind. I knew I always had this in me. People just had to open their eyes to it. Well, I said, Bryce this is your chance. This could be a third state title for you tonight. Guys, I would say two state titles before the number one ranking in the country and now a third on the line. I would say our eyes are pretty wide open, huh, guys? He'll be on. He'll be able to go anywhere he wants, Natalie. That's how good he has been, and he plays for that man, Calvin Norman, in his first season as the Belleville head coach, but was the running backs coach at Belleville the last four years former head coach at Detroit Cody and a very impactful man and willing to spread the love amongst his staff wants to make sure everybody gets the credit there they deserve Aaron Marshall deserves an awful lot of credit in his third season at Southfield A&T has them in a championship game just a couple of years ago they were two and seven in 2020 they were three and four now his team enters Ford Field 12 and one the one loss was to West Bloomfield in week 13, and he avenged that defeat with a semifinal win over the Lakers. 
Belleville won the toss, elected to defer Southfield to receive. Wendell Smith is back deep, wearing four and white. He's got it on the run at the five. With good speed and some blocking. Splits a seam and driven out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Here comes Isaiah Marshall. What do you like most about him, Devin Gardner? I mean, this kid has quite the skill set. He is a true, and I mean true, dual threat quarterback. A guy that can beat you with his arm, but he can beat you with his legs. And when you have a quarterback like that, it pre presents a real set of issues for a defense. He's going to put a lot of pressure on this Belleville defense tonight. Look at that. Over 4,000 total yards on the season. He has been awesome. He'll be the first to tell you can't do it alone. He's got the big fellas up front and some really good skill players, too, that will be on display here on a Sunday night in Detroit. Let's go, D! Royce Liggins is behind him. We're in 22 and white, now to his left shoulder. First play of the night is a throw for Marshall. Strong arms it to a wide open receiver, a first down and more. DeMario quarrels on the receiving end to move the chains on the very first play of the night. Up front, the offensive line averages 6'2", 251 pounds. His favorite receiver is Tashi Braceful. And they've got a solid ground attack as well. They average over 200 yards per game on the ground. For this offense, you can see on that last play, they gave him a lot of time. And if you give him this young quarterback a lot of time, he's going to make a lot of plays. Now, the one thing that's special about him is he processes very well. You can see there, he sees that they are playing man defense. They drop a guy in the flat. He turns a check down into a big play to start this game. Got to call an early timeout. Spent too much time in the huddle and almost got a delay a game call. Let's look at Belleville's defense. Up front, they average 6'2", 245 pounds. The guys up front, according to their head coach, says they really get after you. Jeremiah Beasley is headed to Michigan. He's one of the best players in the country. He leads his team in tackles with 114. And Jalen Johnson on the outside leads this team in interceptions with five. Jeremiah Beasley is a guy who is going to fly around. Keep your eyes on one and orange, especially in the run game. He does such a good job of putting his face on people, defeating blocks, and making sure that he gets to the runner. 6'2", 220. Monster. Let's see him on offense as well. And a humble young man, too. Very. First and ten. Marshall on a quarterback keeper. Bounce into the outside with good speed. Got a block downfield. And inside the 25. Dynamic early. Another first down for Southfield A&T. Chef, it's almost like having a running back yeah. in the backfield. He goes vertical, and then he bounces outside, sees the cutback. That's what you try to teach your running backs to do. You see inside, and then you bounce outside when everybody sucks in. He does that, and he has the speed to pick up a big game for Southfield A&T. Give him 30. The instincts are evident. Vision. Love the fact that everybody has Warriors on the back of their jersey. That symbolizes one name, one team. A guy who he relies on heavily and has great skill and one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Tashi Braceful, bottom of your screen. Good stick on the carry from Matthias Davis. It's Beasley there in the middle of it, reads the play so well. You see the sticker on the back of his helmet, Michigan. He started that at Belleville. Anyone going anywhere, they're allowed to put a sticker of that school on the back of their helmet and showcase how much they have pride in where their next school will be. It sure is a good-looking sticker, too, isn't it? <laughs> you, you would know. <laughs> Second and nine. Marshall wants to throw. Overshot his target. You can see Belva. They have a, a ton of talented athletes, so they're going to play a lot of man-to-man -man and trust their cornerbacks 
on an island, on a third down situation, if you know they're in man-to-man, -man, you want to see those crossing patterns, those mesh patterns to try to pick guys off and create an opportunity for a Taichi Braceful or a Bowman, number 24 in white, to come open early. Marshall rolls the pocket, stumbling, breaking free for a moment. Scudder stepped his way, took a big hit at the 21-yard line. Raymond Smith on the tackle. It gets difficult when you're the quarterback and you're rolling left, right, with all your routes kind of going the opposite way. It looks like it could have been one of those roll left set up throwback right. He didn't have an option on the right, so he tries to make a play. And this speed of the Belleville defense is going to be after you if you're taking any time to throw the ball away. Not even a thought from Aaron Marshall. He's going to go for it on fourth down. The safety comes down. You got one on one right there. Bunch receivers to his left. Marshall strong arms it. First down inside the 10. What a throw. A seed to Braceville. First and goal. Highlighted him a couple plays before. He's going to come right into your screen right there on the dig route. Wide open. And a nice job of Tashi Graceful. A guy he's played with a long time. He settles in the hole. He doesn't continue to run through the formation. He sees an opening, settles in the hole, knows he has first down yards, and takes the ball and knifes the defense. And what I mean by knifes the defense, like a knife through butter, you tight turn and get as much as you can. Matthias Davis. Touchdown, Southfield a &T. For Belleville, you have to feel a little jolted or surprised. You can see those big fellas they bring in, extra offensive linemen to go downhill and allow the running back to get behind them and get in the end zone. Devin, he was untouched. Yes, he was. Because of the big nasties up front. What a job. Dorian Freeman for the extra points. Wow. An early statement by Southfield A&T. We, we highlight the quarterbacks the first opportunity for the young Marshall to make a play. He makes some nice throws and runs. Coming up next, we'll see Bryce Underwood. That's an impressive opening drive for Southfield a and Seven plays, 66 yards. Devin Gardner, they have come here to play even though everybody just automatically assumed that Belleville would be the team to beat and the team to watch. Yeah, I told you when I talked to Isaiah Marshall earlier this year, he's, he's got such a quiet confidence about him, and that bleeds throughout the roster, throughout the team. He's got some, some high-strung guys, and he just calms them down, knows we are good to go on fourth down. He drives the ball into the hands of one of his top receivers, and then they punch it in on the ground. Freeman will kick it away. A short kick. Kevin Sims to the 35. Broke a tackle, spins his way close to midfield. Here comes number 19, Bryce Underwood, with good field position and one of the best players in the nation. What do you want in the quarterback? You want him tall? He's got it. You want him fast, he's got it. You want a big, strong arm. You want to be able to process down the field. He's got all of those boxes checked. And he's trying to check one more box. Three-time state champion. Offers from Alabama and LSU, Michigan and Colorado and Michigan State and Miami. He can name his school. But the first thing he wants to do is put his name on that trophy again. Last year, beat Caledonia. Year before, beat Adams. 
Colby Reed is his tailback to his left. Underwood will throw to Sims. Going the wrong way. He's spun around. This offensive line averages 6'2", 262 yards. If you want the tough yards, you go to behind Ronald Jackson and Lamar Fairfax. As much as we've talked about the quarterbacks, those guys up front are going to be a big part of this game because they are going to move guys for Jeremiah Beasley, number one in orange, the running back. Beasley and Reed have tag team for over 1,400 yards rushing this year. Good defense by Southfield A&T. A Colby Reed, a minimal gain. Here comes that Southfield defense. They run the 3-4. Good speed on the corners. Hard hitting safeties. And Jawan Jarrett and Wendell Smith. Yeah, what you see from this Southfield defense is they play man-to-man. -man, a lot of one-high defense. And so you expect yourself to be able to run the ball on on a defense like that, but they just haven't had success just yet. Here's a third and long for Bryce Underwood. Four wide receivers set for Underwood. Has time, incomplete, almost intercepted. Southfield lines up in that 4 2 5. It's car kind of hard to decipher where guys are going to be. You can see that ball just a little bit errant trying to make get the target, but it's a guy covering him, right? You try to throw that ball, he's being covered. Usually against a 4 2 5, it's not traditional. You got five defensive backs on the field, and so what is the coverage is the question for Bryce Underwood. He has to go to the sideline, get on that iPad, and see what they're trying to do to him so he can have success. Ball rolls inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. As impressive as Southfield A&T's offense was on their first drive, that defense forcing a three and out equally as impressive and setting the stage again for Isaiah Marshall. And for Belleville, you know right now you've got to contain Isaiah Marshall. That is the goal here. And I'm just telling you, these kids on this field, they've played each other growing up for ages. It seems like they started together, and now that some of them are on separate teams, but Jeremiah Beasley is the teammate, former teammate, of Isaiah Marshall for the Southfield Falcons. Didn't Love know that, did you? Love it. Mm -hmm. Well, I did because I talked to you before the game. <laughs> That's an impressive road to the finals. <laughs> they beat some really good teams in Fordson and Cast Tech mm -hmm. and West Bloomfield as well. That's a good, and, uh, along with Chip Valley. Battle-tested Southfield A&T. And a test for Belleville as well. Marshall gets punched in the mouth. Loss of a yard. Rashad Jones delivered the first blow. Take a look at these guys. And not only just in this game, but in the state championship, played earlier, playing right now, playing today, playing today on opposite teams, I might add. Playing today. These kids have grown up together, gone to caps together, and now they get to battle against each other, and some of them get to battle with their former teammates. I would assume that team won undefeated. <laughs> they did go on the feet quite a bit. <laughs> they were pretty good. <laughs> to the 32-yard line on the pitch and catch. Marshall to Taiwan Esper. up a third and six for Southfield A&T out of the OAA White where they finished first place this year. Three wide receivers set for Isaiah Marshall. No safety back. This is a matchup that they love to attack. Tashi Braceful. Another stoppage of play and another timeout. For Southfield A&T. Their second one burned in as many possessions. Aaron Marshall, you see his offensive coordinator there, Rich Pop, talking to his offense, trying to get them on the same page. 
you didn't know much about Southfield A&T, they were established in 2016. It's a combination of Southfield High School and Southfield Lathrop, 15 miles northwest of Detroit, their first appearance. They have been impressive all season long. Again, their lone loss to West Bloomfield on October 13th, but they avenged that with a five-point win a week ago against the Lakers. Chef, you, you got to know, Southfield and Southfield Lathrop, bitter rivals. Yeah. So for them to join and be able to get to this point is it, very impressive. Yeah, we've seen that before in Royal Oak and Bloomfield and other places. Here we go on third down and six. Marshall throws and through the hands of his intended receiver, Tashi Braceful. And that's what you want to do. You want to give Tashi Braceful, Braceful an opportunity to work those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Now, for Tashi Braceful, he gets to that nine stop. It's a nine. Nine is a go route, and then nine yards, you stop and turn. This is a great throw by Isaiah Marshall. I guess you could move it a centimeter to the right on the outside shoulder, but he throws with anticipation and timing to beat the flat defender. Tashi Braceful is going to wish he came up with that, and he'll make that play more times than not. Remember, Marshall is also the punter. He's going to take a couple steps back, try to get him off sides, and then he's going to pooch it. Low kick with a kind roll. Doesn't look good, but it worked. It sure did. <laughs> to the 32-yard line, and that's where Belleville takes over on their second possession after going three and out on their first possession. Belleville is between Detroit and Ypsilanti, established in 1869. Almost 1,800 students go there out of the KLAA West, or East, rather. And they've been pretty good in state championship games. The 38-game win streak, the seventh longest in MHSAA history. There was another orange team that had a, a win streak similar to that Brother Rice back in the day, huh? Was it that long? I didn't realize that. Close. Since 2017, Belleville is 83-5. and five. Wow. Trips to the left of Bryce Underwood. On the ground, Beasley broke a tackle. Tough to bring down with just one man, and he gets to the 37-yard line on toughness, grit, and strength. I said it on the previous drive. As much as Bryce Underwood is a dynamic quarterback, this team is built on toughness in the run game, and it starts with Jeremiah Beasley, an outstanding runner, going to play linebacker at Michigan, but he just as well can play running back. Quick swing pass to Sims. He's driven out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Enough for a first down, and Belleville moves the chains. When you have successful run plays, you get that option because you're going to start adding guys into the box to try to stop it. You get that option to spit the ball off quickly to make sure you allow your wide receivers to catch and run. It's just an extension of the run game. That pass was completed to Trey Graham, not Kevin Sims. Graham, the junior, with his 27th catch of the year. First and ten for Belleville. Deep drop. Strong arms it and incomplete. And here comes the flag for pass interference. Yeah, that's about as pass interference as pass interference gets there. It's on a, a Jylan King. Pass interference. Defense. 15-yard penalty. That results in a first down. Yeah, and he's in position, right? He's in a position. The ball is extremely high, so he's not going to be able to make the play on the ball anyway. He didn't have to do it. It seems like he just got a little over-anxious trying to make the play, and it's clearly pass interference. So you're playing against a 4-2-5 defense. The bunch formation and crossing routes and those quick screens work really, really well because a lot of guys are inside. You got four, two, and then five defensive backs back, and it just really hurts the defense when you get the ball out quickly and allow your athletes to be just that, athletes. I always love the bunch formation, the stack formation, the twist because confusion. it really forces the secondary to communicate even that much more, doesn't it? Going to go empty here. Five wide receiver set. The box is light. You can go quarterback draw here with only five guys in the box. Instead, they swing it out. Good speed inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. It's Adrian Walker. He's a burner. 4-2-5 beaters. What was one of them? Quick screens. Get the ball out quickly. And now you get the help from your offensive lineman getting out in front to make sure they block for that screen.
Beasley again. Good run to the 22. Shamarian Fleming with a tackle. A good job by the Belleville offensive line, paving the way for some open alleys that allowed Beasley to pick up a good chunk. Give him seven at second down and three. Getting soft coverage by Southfield, so you can get those quick screens or quick hitch routes five yards down the field. Get the ball out quickly. Beasley off play action and incomplete. Underwood right there in the belly and then tried to throw a post route and went a little too high. I'm just telling you, Belleville plays a lot of football. They're not used to guys being so close. Take a look at how close these defensive backs are. And, uh, and watching at home, you would say, oh, he turned them just a bit. The referees are going to let these guys play. These are talented athletes, and they're moving extremely fast. You're not going to get that call in that situation. Underwood wanted it, didn't get it. It's third and three. Hold it. This will be a first down. Inside the 10, Andre Thomas on the receiving end of that pitch and catch. At home, you're probably wondering, well, they're blocking downfield. You're not allowed to do that. Take a look at 15. The ball is thrown and caught behind the line of scrimmage, so he's allowed to block right away. Nice job and a nice design by Belleville. First and goal for Belleville's Tigers from the 10. Underwood too high for his intended receiver. Second and goal. I see this all over the country at the next level. Division one football, the RPO game, it, it makes your feet kind of stagnant because you go with the fake. You have to turn your feet to fake the ball, but then so many times I see young quarterbacks not get their feet re-aligned to make sure they make an accurate pass, and that's what you saw there, just kind of stuck in mud after the fake trying to make that throw, and it made it sail just a bit. Beasley in the backfield with Underwood. He'll get the call up the gut to the six-yard line. A guy that's going to have to have a really big day for Southfield A&T is number 15, Jordan Melton. A linebacker, he's going to be tasked with, with making sure that Jeremiah Beasley cannot get off. Because I'm telling you, this is a track guy, Jeremiah Beasley, who has the home running home run hitting ability. You got to make sure you keep him in check in the run game. Empty set for Underwood. He loves to get the ball here to Sims. Quarterback draw. Southfield A and T was ready for it. Good work up front led by Marcus Bowler. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the box. You're outnumbered for the quarterback draw. You don't have enough guys. It just evens out in a nice job of calling a game or a stunt or a twist to make sure that you get free to make a play on the quarterback. Big fellas up front are tough to move. But the quarterback has dynamic is Bryce Underwood. You almost are comfortable in this situation down close to the five-yard line where you have a quarterback that can run or throw, right? So I will put him on the move and allow him to use his athleticism to make a play. And even if he drops straight back, he can still move around and make a play. Is this a delay of game? It is. Oh, my goodness. I don't think it hurts it as much. I think it actually gives you more space with the delay of game because now you can get your receivers a little bit further down the field. When you're in tight, there's just not a lot of space, and everybody can not really retreat and keep their eyes on the quarterback. Well, now just a little bit more space, and you see the bunch down at the bottom of your screen coming up here. Tenth play of the drive, Dev. Underwood looking right. Pressure comes. He unloads back to the end zone. Out of the end zone. Incomplete. 
They turn it over on downs to Southfield A&T. Chef, do you see what I mean there? Right, and people at home are probably thinking, that's crazy. Why would you want to go back? Well, it gives you more space to throw the ball down the field. They actually need to take another penalty to have a little bit more space because this is a nice throw. You want to get that ball up. Airline to the top of the afro on the back end zone, but he doesn't have enough to get his feet down in bounds. And a nice job by the pass rush to get to Bryce Underwood and hit him. Boy, Matthias Davis, number seven in white, forced Underwood to throw it earlier than he wanted to. And it'll be Southfield a and taking over at their own 11-yard line. The stand by the Warriors' defense was impressive. We've seen this Southfield a and team all season. The one thing they've struggled with is stopping the run. They haven't done a very good job, but today they stood tall and stopped the run against this talented Belleville offense. Marshall with a quick toss. And a gain of just a couple. Mario Quarles on the receiving end of that one. Marshall in his career, almost 9,700 yards and well over 100 touchdowns. Kind of under the radar because of all the attention to Bryce Underwood. Royce Liggins is to his right on a second and nine. Wants to throw from the shadow of the goal line. On a slant route. Intercepted! A one-hand pick! Adrian Walker with dynamic skills. Goodness. He goes up with two, stops it, and then behind his back, he reaches and sticks it for an interception for the Belleville defense. What an amazing play. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen it. Maybe in basketball, but not in football. This is some kind of unbelievable play. Not sure if his knee went down or not. That's what they'll look at. It's a clean pick, no doubt. You know what, Chef? I hope that they review it so we can watch that interception five times more. What an amazing... I've never seen that, Chef. I've watched a lot of football. I've played a lot of football. I've never seen the attention to detail to first stop the play and then catch it behind your back. Southfield is challenging that the, that the defensive player's knee was down after the interception. I mean, absolutely amazing. Boy, the hand-eye coordination, the ability to stay focused on the ball, because usually you got to see it, don't you? He can't see it. It's behind him, and I think they're going to make sure they rule this correctly. The knee looks to be down, and he has control, but how about that freeze frame? That's a catch at home, if you're wondering. That is nuts. I don't know if you remember or not, Shep. Jordan Lewis, Wisconsin, 2016. He had a one-handed snag on a defensive back. That's significantly better. It's not even close, you know, in my I, opinion. You know, I, I don't remember that. I do remember the Charles Wilson interception. That's that significantly that. better, and I'm, I don't, I'm going to say it's not even close, and I love Charles Wilson, as you probably know. That is some kind of special play right there. Jordan Lewis former cast technician, now playing with the Dallas Cowboys. Won a state championship in this very building, playing at the next level. I'm just telling you, a lot of Detroit guys floating around that NFL. This could be the next one with a play like that. Preach. Oh, we can't see this enough. It's amazing. Oh, how? I have no idea how he did that. Oh. He's a magician. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, we talked about it at the top. We said, high-level football, Division I players all over the field. Plays will be made tonight at Ford Field. Wow. That's one you'll remember forever. Tell that story over and over and over again. Probably on top ten plays tonight. Find me one better. 
I, I don't there I, I don't know who's playing today and oh. I know the NFL played. I, I don't see a play being better than what we just saw. Yep. That is incredible. They're trying to sort everything out and after review, the interception turnover is confirmed. However, the runner's knee was down at the 26-yard line. It'll be first down Belleville at the 26. It's the right call. I'm just not sure how many people truly care because they're still amazed and shaking their heads after the interception itself. And for Isaiah Marshall, you have to shake that off. The one thing that you have to do when you're trying to throw that post route or that bang eight, you have to assess how deep have the underneath droppers dropped. How deep have those underneath hole players dropped? That's a nice job by Adrian Walker Jr. to drop and get underneath that post route to make that play. But Belleville would tell you he's their best cover corner. Now he's their best magi magician as well. Key play there to give Belleville's offense first and 10 from the Southfield a and 26. Pump fake for the end zone. Juggled and out of bounds. Those wheel routes can be kind of tough to stop. That's an out and an up. But you can see Demario Quarles is all over it with a nice PBU, a pass break up. The one thing for Sims, if you want that to work, you want him to bite, you got to look back at the quarterback when you go on that out route to make sure that he believes you're running out. That's a good point. Not a great route there. This is Colby Reed. Third and seven for Belleville. Remember, they were turned away by this Southfield a and defense last time they were in the red zone. They're not quite there just yet, but a big play upcoming here as we wind our way toward the end of the first. I'm so impressed with the way the Southfield a defense has kind of been able to stifle Belleville to this point in this first quarter. Agreed. Underwood to throw. Pressure comes from the edge. Weaving his way, he's got some room. Broke a tackle and tiptoes out of bounds at the first down yard marker. You don't see him do it a whole bunch, but I'm just telling you, he's a dynamic runner. His legs are very important for what they're able to do. And with the pressure that Southfield is putting on them, he has to use them, and he uses them there to get a first down and then safely scampers out of bounds. Man, is that a good-looking athlete, right? A couple of good stiff arms, too. Colby Reed. Touchdown, Reed, and Belleville has tied it up. Take a look at the double team right here. These two guys are going to make sure the edge is secured and move the defensive lineman out of the way, and it creates that huge gap. And then you come off and make a play on the safety if you're the wide receiver. Very nice job of securing the edge first and allowing Reed to get through and make a play. Andre Thomas, the, def uh, the tight end, able to get one block in a tag team and then reach the second level to get his teammate into the end zone, and now they have grabbed lead. Colby Reed busting in on a nice run after the unbelievable interception, capping off a four-play drive to give the Tigers, the two-time defending state champs, the one-point lead. Welcome back into Ford Field. Well, that's Bryce Underwood. We know how incredible he is as a quarterback, but that's not always the position he dreamed of being as a kid. When he was around five or six years old, he told his dad he wanted to play running back because he always wanted the ball in his hands. Well, funny enough, his dad is the running back's coach at Belleville, and he told him, no, you're playing quarterback. Bryce told me he'd cry, he'd get mad every time his dad told him that, but his dad always
always saw him as more of a leader. And funny enough, Bryce said, you know, I still sometimes think about what it would be like to be a running back, but man, my dad knew all along what my potential could be, so I thank him for that. Natalie, that, that's that's amazing because I'm just going to tell you, when I was a kid, I started off as a running back, and I didn't want to play quarterback either. The reason I started playing quarterback is because my coaches figured out I could get the ball faster if you just get it right from the center. And, and I'm sure that Bryce Underwood is happy that his father made the decision for him to be a quarterback. Well, to a certain extent, he does play a little running back, right? I mean, yeah. he had a key first down run on that play, so this is a guy who can run it. He just prefers to throw it. His team has the one-point lead. Brayden Lane will kick it deep for Belleville. Wendell Smith inside his own five. Pushed out of bounds at the 16. to see how teams respond to in-game adversity and a little change of direction you know a change of emotion as well Southfield 8 and T will have to do just that here with their offense now on the field down by a point it is a team that doesn't turn the ball over a whole bunch especially Isaiah Marshall how does he respond from an interception and it was just a little bit of attention to detail make sure you know where the guys in orange are going to be lined up you have to have a short memory when you play the quarterback position it's a first and ten for marshall looking right and incomplete intended for xavier bowman seven seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Xavier Bowman is not a guy that's going to separate a whole bunch, right? He's the guy that makes the combat catch, and you put it in his area with guys around him, and he usually comes up with nice, strong hands. He wasn't able to make the play there. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, Southfield ANT fans specifically, are saying, well, what about the pass interference? Well, both guys are battling. Both of my guys have hands on each other, so you're never going to make that call if you're a referee, or at least you should Marshall to throw again. Clean pocket, big arm. Down the middle of the field has his man. Big gainer inside the 30. Braceful holds in his second pass of the night. Tasha Brace is going to go down the field on a post route, but they're going to get a guy here into the flat. And the reason they, if they're enticed to take the flat route, because he's thrown it over and over again. They've thrown it, they've thrown it, and now you hit him over the top for a huge play for Tashi Braceful. That ends the quarter. 59 yards. Marshall to Braceful. Like they've played together since they were kids. Oh, that's right. They, they have. have. Seven six Belleville after one and a good one on Valley Sports. You care for that. To the start of the second quarter, let's take a look back at that play that we just saw. A huge play, and why does it work? Well, because you don't go broke taking a profit. We've seen Isaiah Marshall throw that flat route over and over again. Well, here's the guy in conflict. You have to make a choice. Are you going to take the guy deep or are you going to take the flat route? Well, he stays kind of in between, and it allows for Tashi Braceful to get behind the defense. Boy, that's a nice ball. But also, yeah. give credit where credit is due. He's got a ton of time because those big guys up front, yeah. they've given him time to survey that defense. Yeah, and if you give him too much time, I talked about it earlier. He's a guy that can process, and you hear that talked about, about quarterbacks all the time. It's so important for a quarterback to be able to process, and he does a very nice job of it, and it doesn't hurt that he can run, too, right? Oh, man, he is athletic. Love watching him play the game, and now he'll start the second quarter on a first and ten. Pressure comes. He throws out of it. That's a pretty graceful play right there, considering the amount of pressure he was getting, and just to live for another day. Otherwise, that's a huge loss. He was outside the tackle box. This is a really savvy move by the quarterback, Isaiah Marshall. He understands that he's outside the pocket and he has the strength as he's being dragged to the ground to get the ball 
past the line of scrimmage, out of bounds, to live to fight another down. Andre Thomas put the pressure on him. Brings up second down and 10. On the ground. With a push forward inside the 25. Dorian Freeman on the carry. You're familiar with a lot of the collegiate rules, no doubt. Watching as much as you do at home. For the high school football rules, there is no tackle box. No passes uncatchable. Personal fouls are not automatic first downs. The ball is dead when entering the end zone on the kickoffs or punts. And one foot inbounds does result in a completed catch just like college. Third down and three for Marshall. He'll keep it himself. Bounce to the outside. Good speed. A first down and close to the 10. They'll mark him out at the 11. A gain of 12 for Isaiah Marshall. A very nice job, and I said it earlier. It's like having a running back at quarterback. This is a quarterback run all the way. You put those extra linemen in, and he starts to get behind him. He gets inside, and then he bounces. He has the speed to capture the edge and another big play for Southfield a &T. Boy, Kansas has got themselves a good one. Four runs so far on the night for Isaiah Marshall. Remember on the previous drive, he threw an interception, and this is a nice response. He's a guy that's only thrown six interceptions on the season, 37 touchdowns. He'll keep it again. Scoring his way for a pickup of a couple. Jeremiah Beasley in the middle of that pile to bring him down. This is a, a balanced attack. I, Isaiah Marshall all season has been the catalyst in the run game as well. 1,300 yards rushing, 15 touchdowns on the season. I mean, just dynamic as a runner and a thrower. That's his uncle right there, Aaron Marshall, the head coach. Brace will the big target to the left. I give him a shot right now, one-on-one. -on -one. He looks the other way. Underneath route. Close to the goal line, just short. It's enough to move the chains. It'll be first and goal for Southfield A&T. Yeah, that's, that's that seldom opportunity to get a first down without scoring a touchdown, but a nice anticipatory throw, throwing the ball before the receiver's looking, and you're going to see Isaiah Marshall say, reach the ball out, go get in the end zone, but... If you're Isaiah Marshall, you don't want to risk fumbling the ball out of the back of the end zone to get a touchback. You're one of the best rushing quarterbacks in the history of this state. You can take this ball and go put it in on the next play after picking up that first down. Key connection to Demario Quarles, first and goal from the one. Here's the extra offensive lineman they bring in as kind of like pseudo fullbacks. Davis scored the first touchdown for Southfield a &T. He's behind Marshall wearing seven and white and a flag on the play. Second delay a game for Southfield A&T. Delay game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. like that doesn't change things. They're still going to get behind those big offensive linemen. Davis squirms his way to the two-yard line. Rich Pop, the offensive coordinator, former quarterback at Labonia Franklin back in his playing days. Longtime brother Rice coach as well. Our producer, Brian Henry, knows him very well. Former brother Rice player. I know him well enough because I played against him. Left-handed thrower. <laughs> Went to Wayne State. Davis again. He's got a touchdown again. And Southfield A&T reclaims the lead. 
I think if you're South Florida NT, you go for two right now. And sometimes you want to get away from chasing points, but you don't want to let this game get away from you. You go for two right here and try to go up by seven. The big fellas going and leading the way for the runner to get outside. You got to love number seven, Matthias Davis, making sure he powers his way into the end zone. Southfield a and is going to take my partner's suggestion. They're going to go for two. Four receivers to the left of Isaiah Marshall. And I think it's to set up a one-on-one -on -one situation with a much stronger receiver in Savi Bowman. Looking left, throwing on a slant, and it is caught. A two-point conversion is good. Graceful on the receiving end. And now 14-7 Southfield A&T, but a flag on the play. And now to the player downfield. Oh Offense. Number 12 was covered up. Five-yard penalty. We tried it down. That's a huge penalty because you, you, you have success but you have to align properly. And you, you can see Tashi Braceful and number 12, Demario Quarles, were both on the line of scrimmage, which you cannot do. That will make number 12 ineligible. He cannot go out for a pass. He does, and it's called back. The ball was tipped, too. A good job by Braceful to keep his concentration. It's all for naught. They'll keep the offense out there and go for two yet again, only five yards further. From the eight. Belleville does not have enough guys to deal with this three-man bunch. Marshall pump fakes. Rolls away from pressure. Buys himself some time. And it is knocked away. Incomplete. The lead is five for Southfield A&T. They've possessed it three times. They've turned it over once. But Davis have two rushing touchdowns on the night. And Southfield A&T has a five-point lead on the state championship stage on Valley Sports. Southfield a and is a combination of two schools, Southfield Lathrop and Southfield High School. They merged in 2016. What used to be bitter rivals are now compatriots, and they've had a rich history of really strong players like Torin Dorn, who played at North Carolina, Freddie Scott as well. Michael Stone played for the Houston Texans. Gabe Watson was an outstanding high school player and college player, as was Jason Jones, who had a spell with the Lions, as well as the Tennessee Titans. Rich football history in Southfield. And it continues in 2023 under the guidance of their head coach, Aaron Marshall, whose team leads Belleville, the two-time defending state champion, 12-7.
Dorian Freeman will kick it away for Southfield A&T. A line drive kick. Fumbled for a moment, then picked up. Tackled at the 26-yard line is Anton Thomas. That was a nice drive that we watched Southwood A&T put together. But now you get another opportunity for Belleville to come out. And, and this is a position they just haven't been in all season, being down by any amount of points. Uh, they're going to have to respond here, right? You, you want to see how does a team who's, who hasn't truly been battle-tested all season, how do they respond when they're down? We're going to see here in just a second. Yeah, one of the keys for Belleville going into tonight was trying to slow down Isaiah Marshall. They have not been able to do that so far. 8.37 left to go in the half. Jeremiah Beasley on the carry. Feeling his way and a good game. I love to watch Jeremiah Beasley get the ball and kind of duck underneath and go through and get behind his blockers and kind of find and sift his way through. Maybe it's because he's a true linebacker and he understands what they're trying to do to him. Picked up eight on that first down carry. And now a first down pitch and catch. Underwood to Trey Graham. formation to the right of Bryce Underwood. Rides Beasley, keeps it himself, pays the price at the 41-yard line. It's a really nice job by the Southfield and T front seven. You have three down linemen, and so you allow those linebackers to kind of roam. You use one linebacker as an edge protector. He goes and attacks the running back, so it forces a pull read from Bryce Underwood, and once he pulls in and tries to duck underneath, you have two more linebackers there to attack him, and that's why that play isn't able to have success. Second and eight. Beasley again. Good vision and strength into Southfield A&T territory and another first down. I mean, just so smooth, in and out of cuts. He goes left, he goes right, jump cut to the right, and then he finds his way, and, and then the power as well. Guys are just bouncing off of him. That's a Division One football player if you're looking to try to see what one looks like. Took four guys to take him down. He gained 11 on the play. Underwood wants to throw on first down. Pressure comes. He gets away from it. Flag on the play, and a Houdini that gets him a first down. Will it stand? Oh. Holding. Offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Still first down. You see it all the time in football games when the quarterback escapes and starts to move and a defensive lineman tries to separate, you have to let him go. And you can see there, just pull it to the ground by the offensive lineman. Damon Denny, the guilty infraction there. Hate to bring that up when flags are thrown because the Belleville offensive line has done a really nice job overall, but there's the penalty right here. Right there, you can see a clear hold, and then he tries to separate, and he snatches him to the ground. The one thing that's that's bad about that is you've been able to play on schedule and use the run game. Well, now when you get in the first and 20, do you stick with the run game? They will. When you have a guy like Jeremiah Beasley, you can do that. He gets to the 48. I mean, he's a dynamic athlete, one of the best, but he's still fighting to be the best athlete in his own house because his mom... Formerly Peggy Evans, now Peggy Carr McMichael, played for Pat Summit and then went and played at Ohio State. And she used to give me trouble all the time as a teacher at Inkster High School saying that I'm making a huge mistake by going to University of Michigan. How about her son? 
her own son going to the University of Michigan I next season. I thought you were going to say you're making a mistake not playing basketball. <laughs> I have played some basketball. Underwood on a screen to Beasley. Found a seam. He's got the first down and more. Shredding tacklers still on his feet and inside the 25. What a run. He's making a case. He's making a case when you can get into a situation where you just drop back and then give him a nice little two-yard throw, and he can turn it into explosive plays. He is dynamic. And I'm just telling you, you do not want to see this big fella in space. Plus 28 on the play. Belleville's march continues. Slip screen. Good stiff arm. Up the sidelines and out of bounds. A positive gain there, though. It's a really nice job by Jalen Johnson catching that quick screen. And, and usually you have to defeat that first defender. And if you defeat that first defender, you're going to have some space down the field. He gets, gives a nice stiff arm and gets vertical for another Belleville opportunity to get a first down. Jalen Johnson, 6'3", 170. His teammates call him Megatron. A little small for, for yeah, Megatron. It's not quite Calvin Johnson. <laughs> not quite. But he runs well after the catch. Second down. Colby Reed. First down run. The one thing you're seeing here is... Belleville starting to lean on Southfield. Now, the one thing that I am seeing from Southfield's defense is they are scrappy. They are fighting and reaching, trying to get that ball out. Ball security is so important, especially down here tight. You don't want to drive all this way and then turn the ball over. High school football can really test your mettle because so many at this level, really good players are going both ways. Mm -hmm. Underwood to throw on first and 10 to the end zone. Almost intercepted. Nearly picked off by DeMario Quarles. And one could argue it should have been. This is exactly what you don't want to do, right? You drive all this way to turn the ball over. Luckily for the Belleville offense, it's a drop because like you said, this should be intercepted. A nice PBU, I guess you can say. 12 on 12 action there. And this number 12 in white. DeMario Quarles has done a really good job in pass coverage. He's been able to get his hands on balls, but he has to make sure that he tries to make plays like that because it's going to set his offense up really nice. Remember, he's a wide receiver on offense. Here's the tough play of the drive. Reed did a nice job just to get back to the line of scrimmage. He was hit immediately by Shamarian Fleming. That's a well-timed call on a run blitz guessing, hey, I think they're going to run the ball, so you bring those guys, you, you sacrifice a lot in the pass game, but if it is a run, you are having your guys in position to make a play, they make a play there and set up a third and long opportunity. Belleville two for four on third down so far tonight. Underwood will throw for it and drop Intended for his tight end, Andre Thomas, and now it's fourth down. That's tough. I think they would have had something there. Obviously, it would have been tough. You would need to break a tackle, but we've seen that they're able to do that. And I think the right decision here is to kick the extra, not the extra point, but the field goal and get three points on the board and cut this lead to two. Braden Lane has been very steady for Belleville this year. He'll trot on for the field goal attempt. It'll be a 31-yard attempt for the left-footed kicker. A long of 47 on the season. That's pure. 12-10. Braden Lane remains perfect on the year. Belleville. On that drive, doesn't get the touchdown, but they get points. They pulled it within two in the first half here in Division One. Now a message from your Southeast Michigan Ford dealer.
This special presentation of the MHSA football finals on Valley Sports Detroit is presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Well, before the season, our very own Devin Gardner, as a part of his Gardner 5 series, worked out Southfield A&T quarterback Isaiah Marshall. Here's a piece of that conversation. Take a listen. Set, hit. One, two, three, four, five, the ball. Ah, oh, that's too hard. Ah, balance, 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 right? So what was our issue? Why were we off balance? Right, so when we went to throw, right, you, you went here. Yeah. Look where our foot is. So we're throwing outside, right? Right. But look at our feet straight down the field. Right, so what that does is it puts a lot of stress on your arm, right? So now you lose some of your accuracy. And that's something that's easily fixable. So turn around, look at me. If I were to punch you, I wouldn't punch you like this. Right. Would I? I would go here. Boom. You understand that? Same thing. Got it? Okay. Here we go. Set, hit. One, two, three, four, five, punch. <sighs> Can't be stopped. Can't be stopped. Cut. That was such a fun conversation and workout, getting a chance to get inside his brain and understand how he thinks and, and what deficiencies he can fix as he moves toward the next level. And, and he was a great learner. And, and this is why he's had so much success, because he understands he has a coach as an uncle, a coach as a dad, and, and guys who've played before. So he understands how to learn and, and process and, and get information and learn from guys who have done it. Devin, that's a fascinating way to teach somebody. I never thought of it that way. Never thought of it. I'm not going to punch you with my foot going sideways. I'm going to punch you going forward. It's not too dissimilar from throwing a pass. Yep. Excellent example. Punching and think about swinging a golf club. Would you ever swing a golf club with your feet facing outside? No, you'll have your feet in line perfectly with the ball. What about swinging a bat? Would you swing a bat with your feet outside? Absolutely not. You'd have your feet facing the pitcher. Depends on the lion golf for me anyway. This one is kicked <laughs> through the end zone. <laughs> Here comes Southfield A&T with 3.40 remaining and only one timeout, up two. Belleville will get the ball to start the second half. Keep that in mind. Isaiah Marshall has been fun to watch so far, both with his legs and with his arm. Matthias Davis wears seven and white. He's got a couple of touchdown runs for Southfield A&T. They missed. They had an extra point block, and then the two-point conversion failed. Seb, I can guarantee you that a lot of people watching this are surprised at the way that Southfield is handling themselves Agreed. on their first opportunity on this large stage yeah. against a veteran Belleville team. Marshall keeps it up the middle, still on his feet crawling his way to the 28-yard line. I mean, Marshall now with 53 yards on the ground, almost 100 yards through the air. He's powerful. He's got a kind of a low center of gravity, big, strong legs, and, and you can see he's not shying away from contact at all. When he sees a guy, he'll make a miss if he can, but if he has to lower his shoulder, he will. You saw him do it there. Love that clip with you and him. Would love to see more of it. How is he in the film room with you? Oh, he's outstanding. The handoff to Royce Liggins. Raymond Smith in on the tackle. Comes up just a little shy. We saw it was needed for a first down. It'll be third and short. We saw Belleville's offensive possession. They got off of schedule, right? And so it kind of hurt them trying to pick up first downs. Well, for Southfield, they've stayed on schedule, and that's so important. You can see here, third and one, this is exactly where they want to be. They feel like they can get this every day of the week and twice on Sundays. <laughs> hey, I see what you, what you did there. I like that. Uh -huh. They did it earlier. With Maybe they would do format. it again. You know, no. five on Sundays. I'm here until Thursday. Tips accepted. Marshall, quarterback draw. First down. Man, just coming at you. I, I got to tell you, watching this young man play, the more you watch him, the more you like watching him play and the more you become a fan. And I'm just telling you, his play is outstanding, but him as a kid, the conversation we were able to have, and, and when he told me that he would be here, it wasn't an arrogant kind right, of, right. oh, look at me, I'll be here, I'm good. It was more of, 
I just believe in the work I put in. I believe in my teammates more so than anything. He hinted about how important his teammates are to his success throughout the entire conversation. Well, they believe in him, and you can see why. There's a big stick right there. Lorenzo Jennings just sitting in the flat and boom! That's gonna hurt the kidneys. You can see he gets a lot of action with that face mask. It used to be black, he, the orange is underneath, <laughs> and he's been chipping it all season. Second and eight with under a buck and a half to go in the half. Marshall wants to throw, pressure comes. Look at him escape. Squares his shoulder, now shoulder shakes his way. What a move! First down to midfield. That is good stuff right there from that young man. He sees the pressure and he spins out, right? And so now he sets him up. He sets up one, two, three and gets underneath. That is about as good a run I've seen from a quarterback. I told you, he's like a running back that can really pass. One, two, three, left foot in the ground, come underneath and then pick up a little bit more. Wow. Boy, Jameer Gibbs would be proud of that. Oh, right? yeah. He's fun to watch, man. He is fun to watch. Obviously a great passer, but when he gets to running down the field, oh, my goodness. I love the way he handles himself. Four wide receiver set. He looks right. Now left. Across the middle. Caught. First down again. He and Tashi Braceful are a dynamic tag team combo. I mean, really, really well done on both parts, the quarterback and the receiver. The quarterback fitting it into a tight window. And for Tashi Bracewell, doing what I like to call a combat catch, a catch you're making with guys all around you, on your back, hitting you at the same time. A nice job by both guys. And throwing that going backwards. Now on a curl route, Bracewell again. Wrestled down, shy of the 30. I love it. Take what the defense gives you. If you're going to get soft coverage by the defense, you throw it to that quick curl route and be done with it. Braceful will cause all kinds of headaches in the Mid-American Conference. He's headed to Toledo. Jason Candle's got himself a good one. Marshall steps up. Rolls to the strong side of the field. Dead legs his way to the 25 and puts a nose down to the 15. They'll mark him out actually at the 13. I preach this to quarterbacks all the time. I call it getting in the fight. And what I mean by that is when you get the top of your drop, climb into the pocket. And when you climb into the pocket, good things can happen. Your offensive lineman can push the defenders around you. I always like to describe the quarterback position as a service position. You have to serve your offensive lineman. You have to help them when they're going against those talented defensive ends. And when you climb in the pocket, you allow them to push them around and you can get downfield and make a play in the pass or the run game. Long drive. First and ten for Isaiah Marshall. Got a bunch set there that creates confusion in the back end. Looking right, floating it, and incomplete. Intended for Xavier Bowman. I like it. Give your talented wide receivers an opportunity one-on-one. -on -one. He's a big, strong target. He usually makes these catches. I say go with what you've done all season. They like to attack those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and the ball is put on the back shoulder in a nice place, but Savi Bowman is just not able to reach and catch it with the one hand. You would love to see him reach with two, though, right? Well, you know what the saying is, though. Keep going to what works until they prove they can stop it. You have not been able to stop Tashi Braceful yet. This is the 10th play of the drive. Braceful is wide left in the bunch formation for Marshall. Another opportunity. He looks that way. Now throws. Braceful. Touchdown! Oh, baby! On a frozen rope. <laughs> play that you saw us working on on the film is a skinny post and you're going to see it again. Tashi Braceful getting vertical and then snapping it off. What a play. It can't be stopped. You heard me say it when I had the conversation with Isaiah Marshall. If you throw it on time with great footwork, it cannot be stopped. You saw
saw an example right there. Southfield A and T need to use their final timeout. They want to get this one right. Well, last week was exciting. Belleville blew out Davidson to reach this championship matchup, and Southfield A and T had a rematch with the only team that beat them this year, West Bloomfield. And Isaiah Marshall was spectacular again. It was a high-scoring affair that Southfield A and T ends up winning, 40 to 35. Marshall getting it done and getting his team to the championship game for the first time ever. You have no idea how many times these teams have played each other. And that's another team in West Bloomfield with a lot of players on the roster that play Little League football against and with these Southfield players. The thing for Isaiah Marshall is he's been in so many big moments, tight games, opportunities to put his cape on and carry his football team, and it set him up nicely to be in a game such as this. I'll tell you what you like about these two quarterbacks. They both play with a very calming influence. Uh -huh. The stage doesn't look too big for them. Absolutely not. And, and with 13 seconds left, Southfield a &T just scores a touchdown. Obviously, they're going to try to get some points back with the two-point conversion. It's been, I, I can't remember the last game that Belleville was in, where at halftime, they were down. It's been years, yeah. especially since Bryce Underwood has been there. Even before that, five or six years, they have never been down at halftime. Marshall on the keeper. What a run. It was only from two yards away. That doesn't make it any less spectacular. This kid has got the goods. It's just a basic outside zone there, but he does a nice job with a free runner to jump outside of him and then cut underneath the blocks. The vision, the timing, the strength, the speed, the quickness to get in the end zone yet again for two. Love watching him play. He's up for Mr. Football, and so is his counterpart, Bryce Underwood, coming up at the half. Mr. Football finalist with state champs Lauren Plant will join us. Finals weekend recap. And inside Belleville's locker room at the break, they are not used to being down, but they trail by 10 on the biggest stage of 2023. Lauren Penn, Plant has been doing it for years, man. I remember when I was a player. He's like the soundtrack to all my basketball, high school, and football highlight tapes. Are you dating my friend Lauren Plant? I am not. <laughs> As in dating him how long oh, he's been yeah. doing it. That's okay. what I'm talking about. We're not about. dating. No, we're no, not. You know what I'm saying. I might be dating him just a bit. <laughs> well, how good has Southfield a t been? You look at the combination of Isaiah Marshall and Tashi Braceful. Braceful with five catches, 104 yards. Marshall, 132 yards passing, 90 yards rushing. What more could you ask for? It's an onside kick. It's still loose. Southfield A and T says they have it, and they do. What a job, huh? Juan Mitchell came up with it. Lucky for Belleville, there's only 10 seconds left. This is a nice job and a nice guy. I think they might have used it a little too early, right? Used it in the second half, but they do recover this ball. The ball is spinning very awkwardly. And they do a nice job of corralling it. Hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. Nice job by number 17, Juan Mitchell, a wide receiver, a reserve wide receiver, doing a nice job on the pseudo hand steam to get that ball back. Now, for Southfield, you've got some dynamic athletes. Savi Bowman. You've got, we saw Tashi Braceful make a play. You've got some guys that you can get the ball down the field in a hurry but you've used all your time out. Yeah, but remember, the clock stops if you get a first down. Of course. And then you can clock it, and you can clock it out of the pistol or shotgun this year, something that is new. You've got enough arm to get it to the end zone as well. Blitz comes, he eludes it. Throws wide open, down the sideline! Down to 
the five yard line, didn't get out of bounds, and that's of how the half is going to end. Taiwan Esper didn't look at the clock. Oh, boy. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not mad at him for that. It, he felt like he could get in the end zone, and I have to trust the athletes in the arena. He saw an opportunity, and he tried to take it, and I love it. Just came up a bit short. Wow, what a play. What a half. And what a performance by Southfield A&T. Not many people gave them a shot. But you know what? Maybe they underestimated that young man, Isaiah Marshall. His arm and his legs. But maybe the biggest thing he's proven here tonight, his heart in the first half. Absolutely. And like I talked about, this Southfield a t unit has been battle-tested. And not just this year, for years, having close games against talented teams like Detroit Cast Tech and West Bloomfield and Clarkston. And they've come out on the other side shining. And it's because of the guy you just described. Isaiah Marshall has been dynamic his entire career. And he's putting all that hard work and perseverance on full display tonight. Yeah, they have been very calm under these big lights. Oftentimes, you bring that up. How are you going to perform on the biggest moment and the biggest stage? And they have been able to do just that. They have played some really tough teams on their schedule. They've come out on top. They had redemption against the one team that beat them earlier this year. And now they are trying to take down the top dog in Division I. And they're on their way. Aaron Marshall is with Natalie Kerwin. Coach, the way you're playing a team with a 38-game win streak, what's the mindset right now? We're just playing our game of football. I mean, they're a very talented team, obviously. And we're just doing what Southfield do right now. But again, the first half is over, right? We got to go with a 0-0 mindset. Our boys got to stay locked in. So far, we haven't accomplished nothing yet. Take away their one touchdown. Your defense has made some key stops. What's impressed you about them? My, my defense has been doing good all playoffs. Um, Coach Rocco put together a great game plan so far. But Belleville's going to make adjustments, right? So we got to make some, too. And they're going to come out and be the same team the second half, and we know that. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Boy, you can tell, Natalie, that his team plays like his Demeter. Very calm, very confident. And they get what's at stake here tonight. I love what he said. We haven't won anything yet, but they look really good in the first half. They're doubling up Belleville's Tigers. Southfield A&T 20, Belleville 10 on Valley Sports in downtown Detroit. Our halftime highlights are brought to you by Wallside Windows. Devin, an impressive offensive display. And it started early since the Southfield A&T before Adrian Walker's magical interception. Yeah, I mean, one of the best interceptions I think I've ever seen. I mean, I'm just going to say it's the best. I mean, unbelievable play. But aside from that, they haven't been able to stop this Southfield A&T offense. They have kind of at will rushed and passed the ball down the field. And it's because of Isaiah Martin. Matthias Davis with a couple of rushing touchdowns, and then he finds his big wide receiver who's been absolutely fantastic, over 100 yards there for number one in white. Devin, when you look at Belleville, they're not used to being in this type of situation. How does a team get pushed and tested in a situation like this and expect to respond? I think you're exactly right. They haven't been tested, so you're going to find out who they are. We've always wondered, who are they? Because of their conference, they're not allowed to play many crossover games. And now they get an opportunity to cross over and see what type of pride they have about being a Belleville Tiger. And, and we're going to see it here in the second half. Look, their standard was set years ago. They're looking for a third straight title. Don't undersell Bryce Underwood. Been in this situation before, a very calming presence. Seven for 14, 72 yards. They may open it up a little bit more here in the second half. We will soon find out. Love what Aaron Marshall said to Natalie Kerwin at the half. The head coach of Southfield A&T said, we haven't won anything yet. We haven't done anything yet. They have another half of football to play. Leading by 10 and kicking it off to Belleville to start the third. Sims after backpedaling inside his own five. And down he goes at the 15-yard line. 
Let's hear what Calvin Norman had to say to his Belleville Tigers down 10 at the break. Hey, where's that energy at when we was all having a good time? I need to see that energy in the second half. We get the ball back, let's start the game over. We can do that. They lift, they front line is getting tight. They can't hang with it. But we got it. We can't keep making the little mistakes. Okay? Defense, you gotta get us off the field. Alright? Everybody good? So. Hey, the game ain't over with, man. We still in. Alright? It ain't no listen. No harm, no foul. Let's get the, let's get together and let's win this thing, man. Alright? And we have coach. No panic for Belleville, who has scored on their last two possessions. A touchdown and a field goal. In years past, Bryce Underwood was the underclassman, the sophomore, the freshman. Now he's a junior. It's going to be up to him to get this offense rolling. Only 148 total yards in that first half. Easily dragged down for a loss on the play. Belleville has scored no fewer than 35 points. They've outscored in their last 12 games their opposition 612 to 67. They rolled up big time numbers against Huron, Celine, Northville, and Davison. Not so far here tonight. Off schedule on a second and 13. Underwood still has it. A stiff arm to the outside. And then wrestled down shy of the 25. I just said it. He's not the freshman anymore. He's not the sophomore anymore. It's going to be up to him to put the team on his back and make plays. And not only the pass game, but also the run game. Take a look at the strength of this junior quarterback. Just stiff arms this guy to the ground and continues to rumble <laughs> up the sideline. Third and short for him now. Beasley behind him, offset eye. And gets the carry. First down. Beasley dragging tacklers all the way to the 35. Needed a yard, gave his offense 10. Jeremiah Beasley is a guy, even though he plays both sides of the ball, as the game continues, he gets stronger and stronger. And you can see that on full display here in the second half. Look at him just run through and throw off opposition. Eight carries, 50 yards so far for the Michigan commit, Jeremiah Beasley. Give it to him again. Oh, took a big hit and keeps on churning. Take a look at number three, King and White. But the most impressive part, he got a running start from about 15 yards away, gave Jeremiah Beasley everything he had, and guess what? He just bounces off, and Jeremiah Beasley continues with Mosley down the field. This is Colby Reed. First down run to the 45. King again in on the tackle. that Underwood could get better from his freshman and sophomore year, but he has. And he did so under the guidance of Spencer McCourt, their new offensive coordinator, who came in, didn't necessarily change the entire offense. He wanted his players, though, to be able to reach the collegiate level and say, you know what? I want you to hit the ground running when you get there. And they have done everything their offensive coordinating coach has asked them to do, taken the challenge head on. And McCourt gives Coach... Calvin Norman a lot of credit 
for giving him the freedom to do that. Reed, one of those players who welcomed it. Another first down run for Colby Reed. That's not an easy thing to do. When you have as much talent on this team and you've been as successful as they have the last two years, why do you come in and change things drastically? It's not a drastic change. It's just different ways of doing things as Reed hobbles off the field after the first down run. Yeah, they've had all the team success in the world. The ultimate goal for a lot of these kids is to play at the next level and be prepared when they get into those college locker rooms. And that's what he's trying to do for all these Division I prospects. Underwood with a give. And there's a tackle for loss as Southfield A&T swarms. And Underwood, to his credit, Devin, he's the guy who has really accepted it and gone the extra mile, getting there early, watching film, more and more film, and understanding coverages even better. McCourt says he's gone above and beyond what he thought he was getting when he first accepted the job after leaving the Bowling Green staff as a grad assistant. Second down and long. Underwood the throw. Knocked away. Good defensive play. Southfield ENT's Shamarian Fleming with a PBU. Yeah, this Southfield defense, they really have a beat on what's Belleville is trying to do. Shamarion Fleming does an outstanding job of being in that hip pocket and then reaching that right hand in. And he almost has an interception there. A very nice job of being in position, in phase with the right wide receiver to make a play. Three for six on third downs. They'll run for it. And a dive to about the 40. What Southfield is trying to do in the back end, they're giving Bryce Underwood the same look, but with different coverages, right? And so it's kind of throwing him for a loop. He doesn't understand what's happening right now. And that's why you see some of those throws in the coverage. How long did it take you to adjust to that? Oh, it's a, it's a tough deal. I'm just telling you, in high school, I wasn't a great reader of defenses. I didn't start to learn that until my junior senior year because I'm just telling you, I was extremely talented. And when you're talented, you can mask some of your deficiencies. Fourth, it's a big fourth down, though. Fourth and seven, Bevan. Underwood, a clean pocket. And knocked away. Dorian Freeman knocked it out of the air and forced it back to his offense. Watch him. You got to get your depth if you're the linebacker. He, gets, he has eyes on the quarterback, and he just gets enough depth so he can reach up and stop that ball from f flying. You can see the view of Bryce Underwood. You really can't truly see that guy because he's back. He's behind the offense and defensive line, and you think you've got a clear path to a wide receiver in orange. Nope. You got a linebacker right in between. Devin, how much is Southfield a and not just disguising, but changing coverages? They're showing a cover one shell, right, with the DBs all up in the faces of the wide receivers, and then they're going to a cover three or a cover two shell, and it's really confusing the quarterback right now. No confusion for Isaiah Marshall so far. Throws up down the sideline, and the fly route goes incomplete. Intended for Demario Quarles. When we talked with Isaiah Marshall, when I talked to him earlier this year, we talked about his feet. You see him get his feet outside, and look at this perfect dime and an outstanding defensive play by number zero, Andre Thomas. I mean, that, that, that's a tough throw with a guy right in the hip pocket of your wide receiver and a very tough catch to make. Very nice job on the PBU by Andre Thomas. You can't cover any better than that. Oh, no. mishap here. Flag on the play. Belleville still committed to that man-to-man -man defense. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see a shot taken downfield to Tashi Braceful soon. Legal snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Usually it's kind of like a pump fake. Oh, you try to snap it and then you you slip out of your hand and it's it's almost like a, a fumbaruski. He almost turned into a fumbaruski there. 
That'll bring up second down and 15 for Aaron Marshall's offense. This defensive backfield for Belleville always has Division I players all through it. And it's so surprising to see a quarterback who's just attacking them, right? He has no fear in throwing at all of these guys. Marshall on a quarterback keeper. Good run to get to the 44. That's similar to Cass Tech's old defensive backfield. And Terry Richardson, for example, one of those guys who used to be so darn good, so steady. All-American. The flag on the play. During the run, personal foul, face mask, defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. That's big. Yeah, that's huge, Chef. And I was just going to say, with that run, they put themselves back on schedule. Well, that goes out the window because now you get an automatic first down. You can see reaching out right there, reaching inside the helmet, pulling and turning the face mask. That moves the ball all the way to the Belleville 41. You know, those holding penalties with 10 yards are huge, but 15, wow. For an offense beaming with confidence. Got that bunch look again. Gives Belleville some trouble. You can go quick screen or they had a big play to Tashi Bracer down the field out of it. Pressure comes. Marshall slippery. Downfield. Across the green. He's got his man. Quarrels again. When we talked to Aaron Marshall, the head coach, he said his comp, Russell Wilson. And this is vintage, all-pro Russell Wilson. I mean, these guys have no idea where he's going. And then you always say, don't throw back across your body. Well, I teach young quarterbacks, if it's clear and sunny and you have the capability of making that throw, you make it. Obviously, Isaiah Marshall has that capability. We've seen J.J. McCarthy of Michigan oh, do that man. quite a bit. Yeah, you had a big one yesterday to seal a win against those Buckeyes. Outstanding performance. Flag on the play before the snap. Legal substitution, offense. 12 men on the field, five yard penalty, still second down. In the back end for Belleville, defensive backs and defensive coordinators, they call this thing called plaster. When the quarterback starts to run all around and create, you have to plaster to your defensive backs, I mean, to your wide receivers. Now, the problem with that is he's such a dynamic runner. you got to get somebody in front of him to try to stop him from running, or else he's going to run on you, too. That's easy to suggest. Tough yeah. to stop. Davis pulled down. They've had a ton of success, and in, in, in all honesty, they don't have to get all of this. I think they can go outside zone with the quarterback, do whatever they want. He can pick up yards with his legs, and if they don't get the first down, they can go for it on fourth. And when you have that luxury, the play calling becomes easy for the offensive coordinator, Richard Pop. You can what? see those big offensive linemen again in front. Maybe the quarterback doesn't keep it. You give it to the running back and allow them to clear the way. Isaiah Marshall so fun outside the pocket. Stands tall here. Throws downfield. Braceful. Did he haul it in? He did. Inbounds. What a weapon. We showed you the conversation with Isaiah Marshall on the Gardner Five. Well, Tashi Braceful was a member of the Gardner Five a year ago as a junior. And look at him stretch his toes. And that almost good on Sunday. One foot down, one-on-one -on -one opportunities. I've talked about them all night. They go to it on a critical down. What a throw. What a catch. Good enough on this Sunday, isn't it? Wow. Davis plunging forward to the 14. What a statement by Southfield A&T. They forced the turnover on downs after Belleville couldn't convert on fourth down, and they have marched down the field to the 14-yard line, up 10. You heard what the head coach Aaron Marshall said. He said, no, we're coming out, and it's going to be 0-0. We're going to play like it's 0-0, even though they're up 10. And you can see it. They are playing like it's 0-0, like they're trying to bury Dip Belleville. Marshall slings it incomplete. And a good knock away by the defensive back, Joseph Stevens III. 
So what Belleville's doing, they're doing two-man routes with max protection. And, and you might wonder, well, why are you only running two receivers down the field? Well, the thing is, you have to stay on schedule. They've done an outstanding job and, and been able to possess and drive the football because they stayed on schedule. Well, if you don't have protection and you allow a, a guy like Jeremiah Beasley to run through the offensive line and get sacks, now you get off schedule and you're in a position where you can't be as successful as they've been all night. Three for five on third downs. Marshall trying to help the cause. Shakes free of a would-be tackler in Beasley. Close to a first down. Let's see where they mark him out of bounds. Got a penalty on the field. Be third down. No. Looks like they got a holding call. Uh, and I think it's downfield, kind of a spot foul, so... It doesn't take them back too far, but it is a third and a little bit longer. Rather than third and short, it'll be third and 14 for Isaiah Marshall. top of your screen. That's graceful. Looks the other way, though. Floats it and just out of the reach. Good coverage again by Andre Thomas from Belleville. Yeah, the way that Southfield is playing, too, I don't think that this is uh, kicking a field goal is even an option, right? And, and the way that their defense, more importantly, is playing. You try to go for this, you have a dynamic quarterback, allow him to run around and try to make a play. Remember, his legs are alive, and if you do not contain him, it's going to be issues. And if you don't get it, well, you're going to have your defense stand tall and force him to drive it 80 plus. Need to get to the five for a first down. Marshall for the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Southfield AT on fourth down. Zabi Bowman hauls it in. Here's Zabi Bowman right here. And I talked about the scrambling ability and, and putting you in danger there. This is one, two, three. Hitch and throw the ball. It's tipped. And Savi Bowman has the wherewithal, the attention to detail, the hand-eye coordination to still track that ball. And not only that, get your feet in. That's a touchdown on Sundays in the big leagues. What a performance by Isaiah Marshall and this Warriors offense. The two-point conversion is good. On the ground, Demario Quarles makes it a three-possession game. Isaiah Marshall has been money with his feet, but especially with his arm. The gunslinger, 219 yards and two scores. The latest makes it 28-10 Southfield a and Welcome back. Southfield just pushed their lead to 18. Take another look at this impressive display of hand-eye coordination. We've seen some impressive displays of just that. But look at this. In crutch time, the ball is tipped, and you have to kind of redirect and find. I'm just telling you, Chef, it's so hard to do. Now, obviously, the interception earlier was a much better display, but this is a really nice job by Savi Bowman. Just off the right fingertips of Marquise Peoples, and Bowman was there waiting for it. And it's fourth down, Chef. That's huge. You have to have that. You have to make that play, and he made it. And, and this is this goes for the entire Southfield roster on offense and defense. Aaron Marshall is doing all he can to keep those emotions inside and not get too ahead of himself. 28-10 Southfield A&T in a stunner so far. And good special teams coverage as well. Kevin Sidney talking. 
Marshall also doing a nice job of keeping his coaches under control. What a business trip it has been for Southfield a &T so far. But if anyone can stage a dramatic comeback, it's this young man, Bryce Underwood. You feel like it's an, a must-drive score for Belleville here. Beasley fumbled it. I think he got it back. He did. I think it's a miscommunication by the running back and the quarterback. He thinks that ball is being pulled out, and so he relaxes. He thinks it's pulled out, and so he thinks he doesn't have it, and then he just sees the ball on the ground. He thought that Bryce Underwood took that ball on the edge. You just have to be very clear with exchanges here because this game could get even further away from you with the turnover. A loss of one. Underwood has to throw here. Across the middle. Caught. And a nice grab at the 47-yard line. Pulled down by Antoine Thomas. Belleville riding a win streak that is at 38 consecutive games. Among the longest in MHSAA history. They have not lost since September 10th of 2021. Beasley, good misdirection. And then dragged down at the 45 after a gain of two. Shamarian Fleming with the ankle tackle. 210 and counting in the third. And now a message from your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Now with Holiday Cash, returning AZ Plan Escape Lessees can lease an escape for $239 a month for 24 months. See your Southeast Michigan Ford dealer today. Second and eight for Belleville. <laughs> Clean pocket, strong arm, incomplete intended for Thomas. Good coverage by Wendell Smith. He's got an offer from Eastern Michigan to play for Chris Creighton there. What an outstanding job by Wendell Smith. But take a look here. You're going to get two vertical routes, but they're running right next to each other. There's no spacing. And so the cornerback can play both of them and he's able to fall off of the outside receiver and just go inside and stop that ball from being completed. Timeout, Southfield A&T. They've done a nice job on third downs against Belleville. Belleville has struggled in this regard, that's for certain. A key third down. They need eight to keep the drive alive. Let's see what the Warriors' defense has in response after this. Performance by Southfield A&T. They lead the Belleville Tigers 28-10. Calvin Norman, the head coach of Belleville, trying his best to keep things under control. Remember this, 
They've won back-to-back -back state championships with two different head coaches, and now he's trying to win it to make it a three-peat for Belleville. They need eight to move the chains. Pressure comes. Underwood unloads. Deep ball. And pulled in. Rolling his way for a touchdown. That's huge for Belleville. Forty-five yards to Jalen Johnson. How about the quarterback reading the defense and getting a chance to throw the deep post over the head? And number 12, Demario Quarles has had success with PBUs. He comes underneath, he gambles, and the ball sneaks through. And a nice co concentration catch by Jalen Johnson. That's an impressive grab. Johnson, six touchdowns on the year coming into play. Number seven gets his team to within 12. A late addition to the Belleville offense in the slot on the right side. Underwood rolls that way. Pressure comes from the backside. Stops and throws, and it is caught. The two-point conversion is good, thanks to Trey Graham. So with single high look, you want to get a guy to entice, entice the safety here, and then this allows the, the outside receiver to play one-on-one -on, -one on the post. They do that, and it allows for Jalen Johnson to make an outstanding play. The safety comes down, tries to get that number two receiver, and Jalen Johnson can make a play. And then how about the play by Bryce Underwood when the team needs it most? He rolls right, he buys time, and then a little Kobe fade away for two. Big-time players made big-time plays. Belleville needed a drive. They needed a play, and it's on the arm and a little bit of the legs of Bryce Underwood. Go to right now. Go to right you right now. can see him going to the sideline. Let's go. Up-tempo. Let's, Let's go. And now he's talking about switching. It's another thing that the coaching staff for Belleville credits him a lot. The willingness to listen, the willingness to get more involved and become more of a, a leader vocally asking coaches to say, tell me what you want, yeah. and I'll help you. And, and Chef, you got to think about it. When you're a freshman, you're a sophomore, you got a lot of veteran Division I players all up and down the roster of Belleville. You don't feel as, as emboldened to speak up, even though you're the quarterback. But when you're a junior, right, you're getting a lot of attention. The team is now looking to you. you got young guys on the roster looking to you for plays and opportunities and wisdom, and he's able to give that now. Yeah, taking more ownership of the offense in a nutshell. This one kicked through the end zone. Southfield a &T, still with a two-possession lead and a buck and a half to go in the third. They will ride the shoulders of Isaiah Marshall, who has been spectacular so far on this Sunday night. Will they get back to running the football at all? Or will they continue to lean on Marshall's spectacular arm? Well, you know, when they run the football, it's been a big part of what Marshall was doing, right? So are they going to lean into Marshall's legs or arm is really the question. What I would not like to see is to play, I don't know, scared, if you will, for lack of better words. To, to conservative? Play conservative. You, you've gotten to this point in the game up by 10 because of the way you played. And I think you lean into that and allow this young guy, and now older guy, a senior in high school, to continue to make plays with his arm and legs. There's a cliche play to win, not to lose. Marshall keeps it, gains a yard or two. He's taking a lot of big hits here tonight, but he pops right back up. Man, his conditioning is at an all-time high level, man. He is running and throwing and making plays, but he never looks gassed. He's He's never looked tired right. throughout this entire game. And it, it's a testament to not only him, but the strength and conditioning staff at Southfield a &T.
And this is a new thing they're doing, reading off of the wristband. And that's something I worked with him on when we did our kind of segment of like, hey, when you get to the next level, you're going to have to call plays, long, lengthy plays. And they're leaning into that right now. He's getting ready for the next level. Pressure comes. Nifty footwork. And a completion at the 25-yard line. Chef, did Come you on. see that missile? Did you see that? Run left, spin back right, stick your foot, feet in the ground, and then drive the ball to keep your team on schedule. Dev, watch his feet. Yeah. This man can dance. Guaranteed he can cut a rug. Yeah. <laughs> when you move I like agree. this, I on. agree. And, and when, we, when you saw the segment, you saw me paying a lot of ten attention to his feet in the passing game. But I didn't have to teach him this. This is all him. Left, right, back paddle, stick your foot in the ground, drive. Feet in line, perfectly placed on the face mask of Tashi Brace. On a line. Third quarter is over. One quarter left of state championship football at Ford Field and on Bally Sports. You don't want to miss it either. Southfield A&T looking for the biggest upset of the tournament, at least in everybody else's mind, but not theirs. They lead by 10 and have the football when we return. This special presentation of the MHSA Football Finals on Valley Sports Detroit is brought to you by Trinity Health. We see all of you. By Figer Law, all we do is win. And by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers, think Ford first. Everybody raising their hands with four because it is the fourth quarter of Division I. My partner's really smart. I've always known that. He told you at the beginning of the broadcast, this is about two dynamic quarterbacks, Bryce Underwood for Belleville, and Isaiah Marshall for Southfield a and You're right again, my friend. They have not disappointed. Yeah, you don't have to be that smart to figure that out. These two quarterbacks are as advertised, but Belleville's defense has a real opportunity here to get Southfield a and off the field. Oh, no, no, no. Stretching close to the 30 is Tashi Braceful. I think he might have gotten the first down with that last reach, and they're going to give it to him. How about the savviness? Oh of a, a player in Tashi Bracewell, a senior wide receiver who is being tackled, being thrown out of bounds, and he has the wherewithal to know before I cross this out of bounds line, I need to reach the ball out, having the awareness because there are no sticks over here, right? He can't see where the first down is, but he knows he has awareness, outstanding play to convert on third down. Love the way he plays. Eight rocks, 134 yards, and a touchdown. We focus so much on the quarterbacks, and rightfully so, but Braceful has been as good as the quarterbacks who've been throwing the ball around. Marshall wants to throw pressure again. They can't get him. Now they do. They stayed after it, never gave up, and Raymond Smith with the sack. We've seen the pass rush of Belleville, and this is why they were doing the two-man route, because... They can't deal with their pass rush. They're getting guys, and we've seen him create. We've seen Marshall create, create, create. This time, he tries to create a little bit too much and gets sacked in the backfield. So, on this next play, you have to figure out how to get back on schedule with a huge loss. Lost 13, and now second in a mile. Ironically enough, Belleville is not playing with safety's back. They're leaving the back end empty. Marshall tries to take advantage. What a grab at the 40-yard line. Woo! Zabi Bowman does it again. He had the last touchdown for Southfield a and and what a first down catch here to pick up 23. Even if they had safeties back, look at the extension and the strength of the hands to make a nice comeback catch. I said it earlier in the game, he's the guy that makes those plays. He makes another one there and gets a first down. How about Isaiah Marshall? Takes a big loss and then he goes and gets it back with the help of Savi Bowman. Belleville brought an all-out blitz. They couldn't get to Marshall. And he picked them apart. Yeah, they didn't have safeties back, but even with safeties back, you can't help that outside throw. It was going to be completed either way. To the ground, and Davis pushing the pile. This is where the squat rack comes into play, folks, right there. 
gained a couple. The big nasties up front. Give credit where credit is due. Aiden Redding, Jalen Spearman, Christian Green, Chris Smith, and Derek Alls doing a nice job as the front five for Southfield A&T to give Marshall time and give him room to run. Quarterback run. He bounced out of it. And Marshall lowering his shoulder to get to the 45-yard line. Skill is one thing. Toughness is another. And number eight, White has both. We talked about Bryce Underwood checking all the boxes. Watching here today, fans, us, everybody paying attention today. You can't tell me that number eight doesn't check a lot of those boxes as well. Yeah. Not as tall. But everything else, my goodness. But you knew that. Oh, you yeah, knew this coming in because you've coached him. But this is the first big stage that many of us get a chance to watch this young man perform. Plays bigger than 6 feet, 205. That's for certain. Another quarterback run. Slicing his way to the 48-yard line. A lot of people are probably thinking, oh, a decision has to be made. I don't think there is a decision. I think there's eight in white. You give the ball back to him, and you allow him to go pick up two yards. Uh, they've done a great job of bringing in those extra offensive linemen and putting them right behind the original offensive linemen and allowing either the runner, the running back, or the quarterback who's done a great job running, get right behind those guys to pick up yards. Well, you're more of a gambling man than I am. Hate to give Belleville... A short field like this if you don't get it. Yeah, this is quarterback power going right up the gut. They're two for two on fourth downs. Marshall. This will be interesting. You didn't get it. Bill Ball. How about number 23 in orange, Raymonte Adams? He gets down and he grabs his leg and he can't power through. He's going to power through, right? He's starting to push and drive, but he can't drive that right leg and get the first down. You can see him right here. Watch him grab and pull back. Grab and pull back. And that takes away the strength of the legs of Isaiah Marshall. And he can't get the extra yard he needs. Now the Southfield A&T defense has to stand tall. A 49-yard field for Belleville. They need to score fast. Seven and a half remains. And a whistle. Flag on the play, offsides against Southfield a and Self-inflicted wounds, yep. can't have it. Encroachment, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. I don't know if you're big into momentum, that word, but if you are, you, these are the things that change momentum. Absolutely. The fourth down stop, immediately the penalty, look out now. I can't agree more, and also, you have to think, Belleville has been on this stage multiple times. They've won on the stage. In these crunch time type of moments, is the stage too big for Southfield a and Do you get a little tight, right, and you start to kind of have those self-inflicted wounds? They have to find a way to get back to where they were playing football. This defense has played well all night. Four wide receivers set for Belleville. First and five. Underwood with time. They'll run for the first down and more. Creeps inside the 30 down to the 26-yard line. Kenny Brooks pushed him out of bounds. It's a really nice job. You don't see anything downfield. And you, you look, you look, you wait as long as you can, and then use your gifts. The gifts that you've been given and that you've worked on to develop over the years, he uses them and picks up a first down. Easily to his right. A quick 
throw to Sims. Inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Another first down for Belleville. up the gut. Touchdown, Jeremiah Beasley. You should look at these helmets for Southfield and T as the Red Sea. Watch them part. And Jeremiah Beasley just sneaks right through and finishes with a powerful Shoulder lowering into the end zone. That's a powerful young man right there. Powerful, big, strong, fast, quick. He's got everything you want in a linebacker or a running back. Good steady kicking game for Belleville to get to it in three. High snap. Nice job handling it there by Logan Wade. Jeremiah Beasley, known as a linebacker, but as impactful as a running back as well. The rushing touchdown brings his team to within three. Beasley is a beast, and Belleville is still alive. for the Menards big money moment. Both quarterbacks have been money here tonight. Bryce Underwood has been dynamic. The majority of it with his legs, but he gets a chance to throw the ball downfield. And also, Isaiah Marshall, legs, arm. Both these guys are as advertised. True dual threat quarterbacks putting on a show here in the Division I nightcap. Love watching him play. A lot of fun. Devin said this would be the keys to the game. There's the comparison. Marshall, more attempts, more completions, more passing yards, and more rushing yards as well. He's been dynamic, no question, and he's the main reason his team leads by three. But this final seven minutes may just come down to who converts the big third downs, yeah. Devin. You have to put your team in position, and, and all night we've watched Southfield and T stay on schedule and that's why they've been so successful they've had their opportunity to take big chunks down the field when they when they have them but they've chipped away chipped away stayed on schedule and then made the big plays when they can i would not be surprised if you don't see southfield go back to what they had working in the beginning of the game with those short underneath throws to the outside remember the key was they went for it on fourth and two at their own 48 didn't get it and belleville scored three plays later on the return and a good return it is to the 32-yard line. Jalen King returns it for Southfield A&T and sets up his team's offense in pretty good shape. Just look at the stoic look on Isaiah Marshall's face. Just poised, unshaken. He's been in moments like this throughout his entire career. He actually thrives in these types of moments. Remember, last week he beat West Bloomfield on a late drive. So if the moment is too big for him or his team, it sure has not 
shown so far tonight. Oh no, it has not. And don't think because they didn't get it on fourth and two that that moment was too big. That was just a really nice play by Belleville's defense. I agree. Marshall steering the ship from his own 31. Great protection. A downfield shot incomplete. Just some chicken fighting downfield. Nothing wrong with that. And good coverage by Joseph Stevens III. Yeah, a little bit of back and forth there. I think it's a good no call. They've allowed him to play this entire game. Back and forth, grabbing, tugging. Right, nothing there stood out to me to say that you need to throw a pass interference call. Can't change it now. All you players ever looked for was consistency from the referees in any sport, really. Yeah. You find out early how are they going to call the game, and then you adjust and play to that fact. See if he gets Braceful involved. He's been so good tonight. He split wide to the right. Marshall will keep it. Tough sledding inside. Third and long for Southfield a &T. And the emotion for Lamar Fairfax is contagious for that Tigers defense. Yeah, you talk about that thing called momentum. And to this point right now, it looks like it's kind of changed its address, right? This Belleville defense starting to stop and find out how they can get Southfield a &T off the field. And they have another opportunity here on third down. Safety shaded down here, so you want to look there. I think Belleville recognized it too. You can see trying to get a safety over to the other side. They weren't in a good position to stop that two receiver side to the top of your screen. Now a message from Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Family is not just our name, it's the way we do business. My father chose the name Family Heating because he wanted our company to treat everyone like family. You'll see the difference family makes. Fair to say it's the biggest third down conversion so far tonight for Southfield a &T. They are four for eight in this situation so far tonight. In number eight, they trust. The question is, will he put it up in the air? Or will he use his legs on the third down and long? Favorite receiver tonight has been Tashi Braceful. He wears number one, is split wide to the right. One on one. Looking that way. Pumping. Pressure comes, unloads, and it's intercepted. Marquise Peoples. Isaiah Marshall has had a ton of success creating, moving, making plays, and this time he gets burned by it. The pressure is immense. He's trying to get out and make a play, and he throws the ball just a bit too high in an interception by number seven, Marquise Peoples. I said it before, I think Mr. Momentum has changed his address. Good hands by Peoples, and that's because he also plays some wide receiver in this Belleville offense. Another short field for Belleville's offense. In tight games like this, turnovers are what lose you the game. And you can count the opportunity to go for it on fourth down and not getting it also as a turnover. And you do not want to give the man on your screen, Bryce Underwood, a short field, but they do here. Last drive was just 49 yards. This one from the 35 of Southfield a &T. Beasley to the outside. Lowers the boom. A first down run to the 21. Jeremiah Beasley has done a really nice job 
and he delivers the blow. Listen to this. He'll get it again. Legs churning to the 16-yard line. Remember I talked about in the third early, quarter early that Jeremiah Beasley gets stronger as the game goes on. This is a guy who's playing both sides of the ball. Does he look like he's tired? No. The condition of this, these athletes has been on full display, and it's very impressive on both sides. He and Belleville's offense showing great resiliency on this Sunday night. After trailing by 10 at the break, they pulled it within three and looking to take the lead. It would be their first of the night. Underwood to Beasley with some blockers. Touchdown, Jeremiah Beasley. They have their first lead on a Sunday night at Ford Field. Pulling around to lead through. And watch Beasley get his hand on his back and direct him. Boom! You get there, and I'll go there. Into the Honolulu Blue end zone. Really nice block by Ronald Johnson, the center as well. Beasley over 100 yards and a couple of touchdowns. His team is up three. Make it four. Two short fields, two rushing touchdowns by Jeremiah Beasley. That first one was from 15 yards away. This one from 17 yards away. And the two-time defending state champs are on their feet with the lead and time winding down on Valley Sports. Belleville has owned the fourth quarter on two short fields. They've also scored touchdowns on their last three possessions. They've put Isaiah Marshall and company in a hole. Remember, we showed you this win streak earlier. We told you the last time they lost. Jeremiah Beasley said, not so fast. Looking to make it 39 in a row if they can hold on and hold off Isaiah Marshall and Southfield a &T. Plenty of time. 447 left to go in this one. Smith and King are deep for Southfield A and T. Jeremiah Beasley, who has scored the two rushing touchdowns here in the fourth for Belleville, won't get a chance to rest too long. He'll be back out there at the linebacker spot as soon as Southfield A&T's offense hits the field. And they will do so starting at their own 31-yard line after the return. This Isaiah is what Marshall, you play for, man. This is exactly what you play for. This is why you lift all those weights. This is why you watch all that film. It's for opportunities like this. And I can tell you firsthand, Isaiah Marshall has been in opportunities like this and situations like this his entire career. Down in the fourth quarter with an opportunity. It just happened a week ago. He's had these opportunities. He's thrived in these opportunities. Can he do it again? Every kid was pretending that they were Tom Brady or Peyton Manning or Joe Montana or Terry Bradshaw in their backyard in a situation like this. And in my opinion, I think that Southfield has to treat this like it's their last drive. Agreed. And have to get Tashi Braceful back involved. On a slant, Braceful's got it. He was drilled at the 37, but held on. Big, tough, strong receiver. Good first down play for the A&T offense. They get it to him on a slant route. Got to get him involved. A great combat catch. Boom! Oh, my goodness. What a form tackle by number 21 in orange, Lorenzo, Lorenzo Jennings. Jennings. Big night for Braceful.
Marshall. To Braceful again, and another grab just shy of midfield. What Belleville is doing right now, they're trying to bracket Tashi Braceful, but the corner's still retreating. Right? What you want to do is you want to get up in his face. You want to make sure you redirect him because you know you have help over the top. You can be a little bit more aggressive. Well, you can see Lorenzo there is backing up, and it allows Braceful to just run, set up, and Marshall throws an on time, on target throw. 10 catches on the night for the senior headed to Toledo, Tashi Braceful. He's man again. And Marshall's going to run it up the middle. A good run. A good push by that offensive line. Gets him to the 43. Nice job by offensive coordinator Richard Pop. You go outside, you go outside, and then you get back to what has worked a lot tonight. Isaiah Marsh Marshall behind extra offensive linemen straight up the gut. Love the vision, huh? Second and one. Quarterbacks love this situation. That playbook is wide open for Southfield a and on second and one. Marshall looking, throwing, caught on a curl route. And inside the 30, finally wrestled down his second favorite receiver, Zavi Bowman. You can see the methodical approach of the offense. They want to make sure they have the ball last. They don't give Bryce Underwood and this Belleville offense an opportunity so they continue to take their time, drive down the field. But the one thing that you have to do, you got to score. You got to make sure you go score no matter how much time is left on the clock. Right, that's a tough balance, isn't it? Yes, yeah. you want to score tough. when it's available. So many people say you don't want to score too quick. Well, you score when you can. Yeah. Alley defender could stop that one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Tosh, but not Tashi Braceful, Zavi Bowman. Marshall on the carry. Dragging tacklers close to the 20. They had him by the jersey, and they just went along for the ride as Isaiah Marshall carried a tackler close to another first down. One of my favorite movies of all time is The Little Giants. It's one of the greatest football movies. Does this not look like Spike dragging a little giant down the field? Oh, my goodness. Spike play football. You know who plays football? Isaiah Marshall. One of my favorite movies. Amazing. <laughs> little Giants. One of the greatest football movies of all time. Remember, this game was 28-10, Southfield A&T. Some key plays, a number of them, offensively and defensively. A big stop on defense for Belleville. Set up a short field and opportunity for Jeremiah Beasley to run right up the middle as he watches the Red Sea part. And then Isaiah Marshall trying to make a play, throws an interception, sets up another short field, and who do you go to? You go to Jeremiah Beasley, the Michigan football commit. He's been awesome. And what an awesome game it has been. That's tonight's plays of the game brought to you by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. It's been a fun game to watch. What a way to cap off an incredible state championship weekend at Ford Field, huh? You know, sometimes you, you sell a game in the beginning in the open like we did. And, uh, it, does, it disappoints sometimes. It's like, I can't live up to that. Well, this game, I think it's been everything we said it would and then some. Sixth play of the drive that started at the 31 of Southfield a and They've used almost two and a half minutes. Marshall on a quarterback run. Nothing doing. Rashad Jones crashing from the corner. Offers at Michigan State. Cincinnati. Missouri. You can see why. 6'3", 240. The junior is big, strong, and fast. They got zero coverage. You're going to have the middle of the field wide open. Third and short for Isaiah Marshall. He'll take it himself and get it. Spin out of the wash inside the 15 to the 13. He's some kind of player.
Take a look here. Leading through to make sure you clear it for your quarterback. Gets right in front. Boom. Makes a nice block there. And how about the guts and the ability, the balance, everything that you want in a quarterback. Isaiah Marshall is putting it on full display tonight. Time winding down. 110 and counting. All Bryce Underwood can do is watch. Marshall again up the middle with that offensive line, even though it's just a gain of a couple to getting a really good push right now. Yeah, they're going back to Little League football days, right? Just quarterback up the gut. Bigger, stronger, faster. You lean on this Belleville defense and try to get yardage with the best football player on your roster. Because Belleville is kind of getting burned with these quarterback runs up the gut, these quarterback powers, watch for the fake quarterback power. Remember Tim Tebow back in the day. The fake quarterback power with the jump pass over the top with the guy streaking to the middle. That's something that will be available with Belleville dedicating their entire defense to trying to stop the run up front. Southfield A&T looking for their first ever title in school history. Belleville's Tigers trying to extend a win streak to 39 and become the first D1 3P champion since 2001 through 2003 when Detroit Catholic Central did it three in a row. Which camp are you in? It's harder to win your first or is it harder to repeat as a champion? I think it's harder to, harder to do your first because you just haven't been there. You don't, you don't have the, the previous experience to be in these moments. And this is why this is so impressive. Southfield A&T, Southfield High School, Southfield, they've never been on this stage. And for a quarterback like Isaiah Marshall to come facing a guy like Br Bryce Underwood, this is super impressive. And, and he's looking to try to finish the deal. Which player will cement their name, name in school lore? Marshall, lower the shoulder. Not to be denied. Touchdown, Isaiah Marshall. He's worn a crown all night long. Chef, before this drive started, I told you, he's been in this situation. He's unshaken. He's had opportunities throughout his career to be in the fourth quarter with an opportunity to go drive the ball down and win the game. Take a look at him even run through his own blockers to get in the end zone. Full extension. Touchdown, Southfield a &T. Perhaps what's as impressive as anything else is the last time they possessed the ball, he threw that pick. And look at how he responds. Just responded as if he hadn't even thrown a pick. And this entire drive has been on the arm and the legs of Isaiah Marshall, a quarterback-driven offense, and they lean into their quarterback. This is where no kicking game hurts you, though. You have to go for two to try and make it a four-point lead. Marshall off the line. Got it. Oh. -ho. Yes, sir. I mean, this doesn't even look like a quarterback. This looks like a, a man with an attitude. He looks like Jeremiah Beasley on the other side. Look at him put his pads down and lower them through the Belleville defense. Listen, bud, he does have an attitude. And man. you got to love that attitude. This has been a joy to watch, man. Both sides. Amazing job. And look at how much time he ran off the clock. There's only 47 seconds left in this football game. So you talked about what will Southfield A&T do in a spot they've never been in. Belleville's never been in this spot either. They're used to blowing teams out. They're used to running things away. And now, 47 seconds remain in one timeout. How do they respond? You get to see what your quarterback is made of. Because I can just tell you, I was at a game for Southfield a &T where they had 30 seconds to go down and tie the game against a talented Detroit Cast Tech team, and Isaiah Marshall was able to do it. Now Bryce Underwood gets his opportunity to try to drive down and put his team in position to win this game, and he needs a touchdown. A field goal won't do it. love to see a squid kick here, a kick where you don't give them a true chance to get a look at the ball and return it. A line drive into the end zone, forced on the touchback. 
Here's Bryce Underwood, 10 for 20 on the night. 151 yards and a touchdown. Belleville has not lost since September 10th of 2021. 38 consecutive victories, but they have, are running out of time here against Southfield a and Down four, they need a touchdown. If, but for this situation, 47 seconds left, game on the line. Would you rather have any other quarterback? Maybe Isaiah Marshall, but other than him, there's probably no other quarterback in this state that you would rather have with this opportunity as Calvin Norman can only look and watch and see if his junior quarterback can pull a rabbit out of the hat and do something spectacular. Kevin Sims, number 12 in orange, is, has been his favorite receiver all season long. He's been quiet tonight. Underwood with time down the sideline. Intercepted and then dropped. Wendell Smith was so close to sealing it for his ball club. Man, we've seen some real displays of athleticism. Watch him dive and almost end this game, but he can't hang on. One thing that I saw there, though, he almost left the guy down the field. You cannot allow that. The big arm of Bryce Underwood can make a play down the field. If he puts that up top, they've got a touchdown. Four receiver pattern for Underwood. Pressure from the edge. Steps up, picked off, and then dropped again. Kenny Brooks had the same chance that Wendell Smith had, but couldn't corral it. Fans everywhere on both sides, on the edge of their seats. An opportunity to seal the game again, and so close, but yet so far away. Third down and 10 for the Belleville Tigers. Quick throw to Sims. Cuts inside, uses his speed. That's a first down pitch and catch. That's a smart play to pick up a first down with all the retreat coverage by Southfield a &T. But you have to get on the ball and have a play ready to be called because the clock is only going to stop for a little bit. Just one timeout remaining for Belleville. And remember, you can spike it out of the pistol or shotgun formation now. seconds remain clock now winds the ball has to be snapped the clock is running I don't think he realizes it wow looking left throwing across the middle this one's intercepted this will seal the deal and history made for Southfield A&T Dorian Freeman held on this time Outstanding job by Reggie Gardner. Look at the left side of your screen. Gets to the quarterback and forces an errant throw, and it's intercepted. And Southfield A&T will get the first state championship in their school's history. Wow. Shep, you might not believe this. 
Well, on that last play, number eight, the player that we talked so much about, the quarterback, the one who got the game-winning touchdown, he was on the defensive side of the ball trying to help finish this game for Southfield A&T. He played safety on that last play to make sure that he gets out of this stadium with a ring. Wow. Now he'll take a knee and so hold on to that football, football for the rest of his life. The greatest play in football. Victory, Victory formation. formation. Not many gave him a chance. They undersold Isaiah Marshall and Tashi Braceville. Southfield a &T, new champions of Division I for the first time in school history. Rushed for 134 yards, threw for 281. Isaiah Marshall gets one for his uncle, Aaron Marshall, and the community in Southfield. Chef, I was so impressed. Me too. During the Garden of Five interview and, and workout, and I, I kind of asked him, I said, I, I've never heard your voice. I've known you for all these years. I don't even know what your voice sounds like. And that's just who he is. He's a stoic, a calm, demeanored athlete who put his team on his back and sealed the deal for Southfield a &T. You know what they say? They say actions speak louder than words. His actions ringing very loud and will forever be remembered in Southfield. Through the air, on the ground, getting to his favorite target, Tashi Graceful. Sabi Bowman making big catches. Unbelievable job by Southfield Aiden team, but especially Isaiah Marsh. Arguably the best player we've seen all weekend long. He is with Natalie Kerwin. Natalie? Isaiah, wow, the hero of the night. You just shined on the biggest stage, rocking the buffs and all. Take me through this moment as you sit here now as a state champion. Right, you know, uh, you know first off, I just want to say thank my teammates. I couldn't do it with, without, with, without them. Also want to thank my coaches. And just the community that's out there, you know. I asked my team at halftime, are you strong? They told me they're strong. So, you know, we just, we went out of halftime and we knew we had to execute. And, you know, that's what we did. Uh, congrats on our defense because they played a hell of a game. And I just want to thank the whole team. A lot of hype was built around this Belleville team coming in. But you guys were unfazed. Absolutely unfazed. What did your team just prove? Uh, I think we proved that it don't matter who the other team is. As long as we focus on ourselves, we can win. You know, before the game, we told our team that we just got to focus on us and we can't let the hype get around us. Yep, thank you. You know, uh, and I just think it was a team win, so, yeah. It got so close here at the end, but your defense sealed the deal. How proud are you of what this team accomplished this year? You know, uh, I think we have the best defense in the state, and they just proved that today. Uh, we, we was one of the reasons why they scored, because we gave them bad field position. But besides that, I think our defense played great. And, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. It just feels good. I don't know. Go celebrate your first title in school history, Isaiah. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Shep. Natalie, Lance Leipold's got a good one coming to Kansas. Yes, he does. And not even so much as a smile, right? The first state championship in the history of the program. He's going to become legendary. He's already become legendary. Not even a smile, still focused and gives all the credit to his teammates, his offensive line, his coaching staff, his defense. But we watched that and we saw almost superhero-like performance from Isaiah Marshall. Cinderella story maybe undersells it. Just a couple of years ago, Southfield A&T was 2-7. Now, 
they stand atop of the Division I football world in the state of Michigan. What a thrilling way to end a thrilling weekend with a 36-32 final. For my partner, Devin Gardner, Natalie Kerwin, our producer, Brian Henry, our director, Michael Ladino, and Mark Isofano. I'm Matt Shepard saying so long here from Ford Field. What an honor it has been to bring you high school state football championship weekend here on Valley Sports. We'll do it again next year, God willing. Have a great week, everybody, and thanks for watching all weekend long. Win, 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 win.